Hey there. So Los Angeles Police Department just released some extended body camera footage from the Keenan Anderson tasing incident. It adds some extra context to the conversation that I think is important. So let's take a look at it. We pick up the video here where the first officer has made contact with Mr. Anderson and we see about six minutes of body cam footage that had been redacted in the initial release from LAPD. As someone who has trained hundreds of police officers in mental health crisis response and de-escalation, I'll be pointing some things out, but I want you to pay special attention to the way that the officer speaks to Mr. Anderson and handles a person who he recognizes is in some sort of crisis. I'm sorry. Nobody. Please don't, please, sir. Please, please. Sir, please. On the northwest corner. northeast corner. Please. Please, sir, please. Please. Okay. Do you have an ID in your pocket at all? No, sir. No, sir. No. No ID on you. Are you going to have an ID in the car? Yes, sir. Okay. Notice how the officer is using simple language and he's keeping questions short and to the point, asking about one thing at a time. Are you going to have an ID in the car? Yes, sir. Okay. Please. So, who's trying to get you? Who's trying to, who, you said somebody's trying to kill you? No, sir. Nobody's trying to kill my car job. You know what <laughs> What's that? My car malfunction. Who's trying to kill you? My car malfunction. Your car malfunction. Yes, sir. Okay, yes. but you're saying somebody's trying to kill you. You're saying somebody no. did something to your car? No, I did. I did that. You did something to your car. Hey, what did you do to your car? The officer's doing a great job here. He's asking questions of Mr. Anderson and getting some strange responses, but he's not coming back at Mr. Anderson with any kind of accusatory statements or anything like that. He's just continually trying to gather more information. What did you do to your car? I had I lost my key fob, and then I think that I need to air my tire. I didn't have no. Um, can I see a lawyer? What do you need a lawyer for? I need a lawyer, sir. Okay, we're still trying to figure out everything that's going on here. Okay, all right. What's your name? Keenan. Keenan. Keenan Anderson. Keenan Anderson. Okay, Keenan. Where do you live? Yeah, catch your breath, catch your breath. Just keep sitting there for me. Put a stopwatch up on the screen so that you could see exactly how long the officer waited for a response from Keenan after asking him a question. Now, seven seconds might not seem like a long time, but go ask one of your kids a question and wait seven seconds for them to respond to you and see how quickly you go crazy waiting for a response to a simple question. In my de-escalation classes, I harped on patience and giving people time to think and process because there's a lot going on in somebody's head in crisis. Can I, get a, can I get a moment to catch my breath, please? Yeah, catch your breath, catch your breath. Just keep sitting there for me. All right. This is very like six. I have not had a chance to speak with any of the other parties involved in the TC. Can we get an RA roll in this case? I'm sorry, sir. Hey, it happens. You were in the, you were in the, uh, the dark gray or the black BMW? Yes, sir. He's about to get him and try to kill me, sir. Who's trying to kill you? I don't know. Please. Kill me. Please. Just sit, just sit there until Please. I have somebody Please. else here with me, okay? To help, Please. To help with the investigation, all right? Yes, sir. Okay. Vehicle's registered in your name? Say what? Vehicle's registered to you? Yes, sir. Okay. Please look at that, sir. Look. What? Help! Keenan starts to point out something that doesn't exist, and the officer is probably recognizing now that he's experiencing some hallucinations. Please look at that, sir. Look. What? Help! Help! What do you What do you need help with, sir? Help, please! I'm here helping you. All please right? help me! Help! I'm here. Help, help please! I'm here helping you. No, I'm you. not okay, ma'am. I'm not okay, ma'am. Please. What do you need help with? Help! What do you need help? Help! With? My hands are closed! Help! What do you need help? Help, with? please! I don't understand please, what you need help can I have some help, please? Please, please, I'm sorry. My hands are crossed, my feet is crossed. I know. Can I, and I, I, appreciate I just got an accident. I can have a concussion. I know. I'm trying to help you I'm and I have an sorry, ambulance on the way here, okay? This officer couldn't have done anything more to help de-escalate and calm Mr. Anderson in this situation. I'm trying to help you I'm and I have an sorry, ambulance on the way here, okay? Please. Hey, Keenan. Keenan. I have an ambulance on the way here, okay? Please! I have an ambulance on the way for you, alright? Take some deep breaths for me. Please, help me! 
Take help, some deep breath. Help! Help! Take help. some deep breaths, okay? Take some deep breaths. Take some deep breaths for me. The officer is recognizing that Keenan is starting to get amped up, and so he's asking him to take some deep breaths. This is a common strategy that we teach in order to help somebody get some air, number one, and to focus on their breathing, which can help ground them to reality somewhat. Take some deep breaths for me. Yes, I'll be right over there with you in just a second, okay. sir. Okay? I'll be right with you. Okay. Please, Keenan. Sir. Please, I know. Just please. keep your legs crossed for me, okay? My legs are crossed, sir. Look, please. Cross your legs for me, please, please okay? I'm trying to figure out exactly please. what's going on. I don't know. Nothing been okay. going on. I just have you had anything please. today? Have you taken please. anything? Have you spoken? Sir, anything? my hands is right here, sir. Please. I know they are. Please. Keenan. Help. Keenan, take a deep breath for me, okay? Using someone's first name when they're in crisis also helps to draw their attention. We're trained to respond to our names. Help. Keenan, take a deep breath for me, okay? Have you smoked anything today? Have you ingested anything today? Have you drank anything today? Wow. Huh? Yes, sir. Can you please help me? Hold I'm on. sorry. I am sorry. Hold on. Have you had anything today? I need to know, okay? I need to know for the fire department if you've ingested anything or anything like that today. Okay? Please. I, I can't ask you no more questions. I, I'm going to have a concussion. Right? Okay. I, didn't, I didn't do nothing. I understand you Nobody did nothing to me. What's right? That? Nobody did nothing to me. Right? I just need to get on it because I'm in a, I'm in a real situation. Please. What do you mean? What? What do you mean by that? You're, you're running around no, no, like no, somebody's I'm not, I'm after not. you. I don't know who's after you. You need to help figure out who's after you, okay? I don't know who's after you. I really need to know who's after you, okay? That way I can help assess the situation better. Alright? Because we need to figure out what's going on down here with the accident, too. You said somebody's trying to kill you, right? Who's trying to kill you? Do you have a name for this person? Do you have an address for the person? Do you know the person? This is textbook de-escalation strategy when working with somebody in a mental health crisis or drug-induced psychosis. Mr. Anderson is 100% experiencing delusions and hallucinations, and they are 100% real to him. But the officer isn't trying to challenge him on those. He's just trying to gather information so he can work with Keenan. Huh? Do you know any of that information? I need to know any of that information that I can, all right? In order to help you, I need to know that information, okay? Hold on, stay, stay down, stay down, okay? Help, please! Stay down. Please! Stay down. I have an ambulance coming to help you, okay? No, no, sir. Sir, please. Please. You gotta stay here. I got my phone in my pocket. No, I don't, I don't, I don't. I don't have nothing in my okay. pocket. I know, your I phone's in the car. Please. Your phone's in the car, we'll go over please. there in just a second, okay? Please. Just keep your feet crossed for me. Please. Keep your feet crossed for me, okay? Just keep your feet crossed for me. Just keep the... Please. Hey, keep sitting down. Keep sitting down. Please. Stay down for me. Hey, please. hey, stay please. here. So now we're all caught up on the new footage of the initial contact. I thought the officer did a fantastic job of trying to keep Mr. Anderson de-escalated and did everything he could until the crisis and possibly the drugs overtook Mr. Anderson and forced him to run out into traffic. That's where officers took Mr. Anderson into custody and utilized a taser to help do so. The newly released footage also included this conversation between officers after Mr. Anderson was tasered. They discussed how the darts did not make a good connection because they got caught in Mr. Anderson's shirt. Yeah, you get him, huh? What's that? The guy's gonna get him? So they put you on the left side of the shirt. Yeah, it doesn't look like they got him. Oh, okay, it was just a fabric. Yeah, it's hanging in the fabric. He's wearing two shirts, right? Just one. Oh, he's wearing just one? Yeah. It was just two loops. Here's why that's important. The way a taser works is one dart hits one spot, another dart hits another spot. Electrical current goes through possibly through somebody's heart. And if they're saying that the taser killed Mr. Anderson, then that is what would have had to have happened to kill him. Otherwise, the way that they were using it was in drive stun mode, which is basically just like a stun gun. It's basically just electrical current between two contact points about this far apart, touching on a person's skin, going through. It hurts like hell, but it doesn't send current and electrical voltage through your heart. So anyways, I found the new footage interesting. It adds some more context to the conversation. It shows what the officers tried to do for Mr. Anderson before he ran into the traffic. 
and it also gives us a clearer idea of exactly how the taser was utilized. If you didn't see the initial video of the story, my video on that's right up here. Anyways, thanks for watching, and until next time, take care of yourselves.